Today, we've got a new loco joining the fleet. So let's have a look at it, shall we? Roll the intros. Hello and welcome back to Chelmsford Junction. I'm Peter. Today, as the title suggests, we are going to be taking a look at a new loco that's joining a fleet, and that is a Backman Class 37. So without further ado, we're going to get down to the workbench, have a look at it, and see what, it's, what we're going to get from it. So this is the Class 37 in question. And before we have a look at around the loco in the box, we're going to give you some history on the class. The Class 37, or also known as English Electric Type 3s, were built between 1960 and 1965. There was a total of 309 of them built, and they were built in seven subclasses. The Class 37s, before TOPS classification, were numbered D6600 to D6608, and then D6700 to D6999. To the enthusiasts, the Class 37s are nicknamed as tractors for the sound of their engines. The Class 37s, weighed in at 105 tonnes, have a maximum power output of 1,750 brake horsepower and have a top speed of 90 miles an hour on the main line. The Class 37s were built to haul heavy freight trains at Hull and Tinsley and for intercity trains and on the eastern region Lon between London Liverpool Street and Norwich alongside their Class 40 counterparts. In 1965, the Class 37s were also seen on the Great Western route between Plymouth and London Paddington, working experimental high-speed trains and managed a top speed exceeding 100 miles per hour. In 1968, one Class 37 loco was used to test the Westinghouse air brake system hauling BR ferry vans, the longest ever known train to be hauled on the BR network. The Class 37s have been seen with a massive amount of liveries in its lifetime, such as BR Green, BR Blue, Intercity, and then privatisation came along and have been seen in EWS, as you can see in this one, Load Hall, DRS Livery, Network Rail, just to name a few. Not only are the Class 37s still working on the main line under private ownership, they have been used and adapted by Network Rail for train measurement trains, but a lot of the Class 37s have been bought by many preserved railways and are seen to this day in, again, numerous liveries running their trains, as well as some have been bought by charter companies running their charter trains on the, on the BR network today. So with the history done and out of the way, guys, we're going to take a look around the box. It's the usual Batman efforts. And this one is a sound fitted loco. And we go to the sides. We can have a look at the number. It is 32-390DBDS. It's a class 37-7. And it's 37704 in EWS livery. And it is a regional exclusive model. And like I said, it's a DCC sound. So bottom, usual, red with the Batman logo. Top, blue with the Batman logo. At the other end, blue with the Batman logo. And on the back, you can have a bit of history of the class. I'll try and get that into the shot for you guys. If you want to pause it, uh, the film, and read it, you can. But without further ado, let's get this little puppy out of the box. Now... As you are aware, yesterday I went to the Seven Valley Railway with my family and neighbours, and yes, once again, my neighbours were very naughty and bought me this loco. So, straight away, you get the usual product maintenance care and warranty service request sheet, and also the part for the Batman Collectors Club. Let's get rid of that bit. Also, you have tips and tricks on how to remove the body if it is a DCC ready loco. So it shows you how you can uh, unscrew the body so you can do a DCC fit. Shows you also where to oil 
and where all the spare parts in the spare parts bag go. And on the back, as usual, is an exploded diagram with the part numbers to the side, and also shows you that on the bottom of the loco, you can turn the tail lights off, and you can also turn the cab lights on and off if you want to. The next piece is an important piece. This is for the sound functions, and it gives you a lot of tips and tricks uh, through the book. It's only four pages, and it gives you a list of the um, functions, which we will cover in a little while more of the video. So let's get this puppy out of our ice cube. It's, as usual, guys, you know I don't like things like sellotape, so let's get rid of that bit. So what you get in the parts bag? Well, in the parts bag, you get the usual uh, brake pipes and things like that, coupling iron, uh, coupling shanks, etc. You get two nice yellow snow plows in there, and also you find the blanking plates if you want to take this from DCC Sound back to a DCC Ready Loco. So that's the parts bag, so we'll just pop that to the side. And let's get this one out of its ice cube. Let's pop that back on there quickly, guys. Ooh. Box will go in. So, taking a look around the loco, the livery is nicely applied. All the warning labels are in the right places. The data panel is also in the right place. The uh, bogey detail has been picked up quite nicely, as well as the fuel tanks and the side of battery boxes. On the roof, you can clearly see that it's a pristine model. You can see the fan inside the fan grill. You've got the two outlets for the exhausts, and you can see there's quite a bit of detail on the roof. On the noses, let's spin it round. They're both, it's both the same each ends. You have the irons there to hang your um, things like name boards and uh, lamp irons and things like uh, lamp lights and things like that. You also have a aerial at each end, so be careful with this, guys. These are very fragile. They do bend quite easily. And as you can see, it's got the usual two red lights and the two white lights and the main high-intensity uh, headlight. Has got a driver fitted at this end, so I will be taking this tension lock off and fitting a snowplow at this end, and this will be the number one end of the engine. Like I said, it is a very nice loco, quite a bit of weight to it. So without further ado, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to get it on the programming track, get it programmed into the ECOS, and then we can have a look at the actual sounds of this loco. So after a bit of faffing about trying to get this one programmed, um, for some reason it wouldn't program on my programming track, and I've had to do it on program on the main, which is not a good good thing to do with the ECOS CSU because it can tell other chips to do the same thing but we've eventually got it done and I'm going to run you through the uh, functions of this sound decoder so function 2 is just a playable horn you can press and hold it for as long as you like function 3 is a nice two tone horn Function four is a straight air dump on or off. Uh, drive, function five is drive hold, and that is basically you can set the locomotive in motion, and then you can press F5, and it will lock the speed, and you can turn the throttle up to make the engine revs go up higher, or you can throttle it down to make it coast. It just keeps it at that one speed. Obviously, if you want to stop the locomotive, you're gonna to have to press F5 off so that you resume control back of the loco. Uh, F6 is loco break. Obviously, it puts the brake on when you press it and it takes the brake off when you release the uh, trigger. Uh, we're going down to do, 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 coupling up, which is number seven. You can see here it coupling up and obviously the air being connected. Uh, and the function eight is uncouple.
basically where you can hear the brakes being disconnected, the air being terminated and the coupler coming off. Function nine is coasting. So you can basically hit that um, button when the loco is at full revs and then it will drop down to low revs and it will just coast as it is. Uh, then you've got flange squeal, which is obviously speed dependent. That's on number 10. Number 11 is Sparex valves. It is a little bit faint. I think I need to higher up the uh, sound level on this loco, but you can hear it popping a little bit. There you go. Uh, number 12 is, you guessed it, good old guard's whistle. Function 13, which is quite unusual actually, is the cab lights. It's quite a way down the function list on this one. And function 14 is the uncouple shuffle. So, as you can see, that works quite nicely. And function 15 is the master volume. So what I'm going to do next, guys, is I'm going to do a failed start. Next one I'm going to do is a long start for you. Long start is on, off and on. So you could probably call that also as a cold start as well. So I'm just going to shut the engine down. And I forgot to tell you also, to activate a fail start, you just turn the sound on and then straight off again. Now I'm just going to do a normal start just by pressing it on. And that would obviously be also classed as a warm start. So without further ado, we're going to send the loco away. And as soon as you turn the uh, speed control down to zero, you get the brake supply and you can hear the brakes are actually applying in sound. So what I'm going to do now is, guys, I'm, I'm going to throttle this up to a higher speed so you can actually hear what the loco does without the drive hold. Let's bring it back for you. And also what I do like about this loco is when you change direction, 
the lights fade out and the other the other ones so obviously if you've got the reds on the reds will fade out and then obviously your two yellows and your high intensity light will fade on so that's quite a nice effect i'll do that again for you zoom in a bit for it zoom you in there we go so i'll just change the direction to travel It's a nice little fade in and fade out effect there. So let's zoom me back out, guys. There we go. Bring it back round. There we go. And I'll bring it back towards us. Um, also, what I'll do while the um, loco is on is I would actually do the uncouple shuffle that I call it, which is number 14. I think that is a quite a nice little feature. I don't think that would really work with tension locks. Could possibly work with KDs. Um, I suppose if you've got tension locks and you've got like an uncoupling ramp underneath of here, it could possibly work. But we know what all tension locks are like, they do lock up as you know the title suggests. So that is the sound file of the class 37, and I hope you've enjoyed the sound file. So, time for my conclusion. So, what do I think of the Backman class 37-7, what was it, yeah, 37-7 uh, with DCC sound. Absolute brilliant loco. Nice little sound file. Did have problems programming it onto the Ecos CSU, but once I found out what the problem was, I managed to get it programmed in onto its address of number 24, and now it's up and running as you have well seen. It's a nice little loco, it's going to work in well with my, my railway because I do have a lot of rolling stock that it can pull. Um, as you know, I do a modern day-ish kind of railway, so I can pull the Mark IIs and the Mark Threes with the, the, the EWS 47. Would I recommend him buying one of these? Yes, definitely. If you're into a DCC sound and you want a Class 37 out of the box with sound on board, go and get one of these. I would highly recommend it. Otherwise, if you've already got one and you want to get a sound chip for it, there are so many people where you can get them from. Rose and Rails, Lego Man Biffo, Southwest Digital, uh, to, just to name a few that you can get a sound file from nowadays. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I've had an enjoyment in doing this video for you. So if you have enjoyed it, guys, please, as always, hit that like button. If you've got any questions or comments regarding this 37, then please ask any questions or put any comments down below in the comment section there. If you're a subscriber, great big thumbs up and thank you to the people that have joined me recently. Hope that you're enjoying the content so far and I hope you enjoy the future content. And for the people that have been with me for a long time, again, a great big massive thank you for staying with me all the while. If you want to carry on watching videos from my channel, there should be a link coming up here and here. And again, if you want to become a subscriber, you can always hit that subscribe button on the right-hand side. Until the next time, guys, take care of yourselves, protect your loved ones, but above all, happy modelling, and bye-bye from Chelmsford Junction.